You know there's a term called smiles for miles? Oh. Oh. It just can't help but put a smile on your face when you're driving it. I think you'd be hard pushed to get more smiles per mile than this car. I'm having so much fun. I don't want to give this back. I really don't want to give him this back. Hey guys, it's Andy here from The Two Chaps, and look! He's now a mute. No, he's not. Say hi, Rich. Hi, everybody. We're here today, and this has been a long-awaited review. Has it ever? You know, um, Rich has one of these still. Not for much longer. Not for much longer. I've still got one. She's just about hanging together. It is, of course, a review of this 1972 MG Midget 1275. All very exciting. Now, this distance is not just pure fluke. This distance is because, Rich? Well, obviously we're in the height of COVID and under government guidelines, we should be at least two meters apart. But by sheer coincidence, this beautiful MG Midget is 3.48 meters apart, which is almost a meter and a half extra safety just for your benefit. COVID compliant car. Did you like that alliteration? I did, that was very good. Nice. Very nice. Now, in order to keep to the COVID correct order of practice, Rich is going to take Margot, as she's affectionately called, for a spin all by himself. He's promised he won't wreck her. No, he hasn't. He'll give us his thoughts. Oh, I'll promise that now. I won't wreck her. <laughs> That's on tape. Nice. Um, and then I'll take her for a spin and we'll do a verdict at the end. So, should we take her for a spin? Let's go for a ride. Keys are in the ignition, Rich. Fantastic. I've owned the Lacer 1500 midget since I was 19 years old, so I'm super keen to find out how this 1275 drives. Starting engines, chocks to speed. <laughs> She's got a throaty bill. Oh, yes. Right, it's first. Just finding the biting point. And we're away! Tally ho! Now, to make this video feel more like the good old pre-COVID days of filmmaking, we've cut our two individual drives together. So let's get cracking. So, you want to get a British classic car, you don't want to break the bank, and you want to potentially be able to maintain it yourself. What do you do? You look at one of these. Time now for a brief history lesson. May 1958, and the Mark I Austin Healey Frog Eye Sprite was introduced to the world. An affordable British sports car for the masses. MG then released their version in the early 60s, reigniting the midget name after its team models from the 20s and 30s. Both the Healy Sprite and the MG Midget were built side by side in the same factory, even using the same parts. During its 21 years of production, engines ranged from 948 cc's to 1500. But today, we're in... The 1972 1275 round wheel arch model. Arguably one of the more desirable options because of how it looks. Now let's talk about exterior styling. It's got that classic British feel to it. It has a long bonnet with the two headlamps just looking straight down. Styling is absolutely classic British sports car. It's a beautiful styled car. Um, it's a very pretty little car. It makes people smile when you're driving down the road. It's a joyous ve vehicle to look at, it really is. It's got fantastic little quarter bumpers at the back, which sort of frame the number plate, if you will. And the grille is really cheeky and fun to look at. The interior is simple. I've got a row of Smith styles in front of me. I've got fuel, I've got oil pressure, I've got water temperature, all reading perfectly. I've got a rev counter and I've got a speedo. And that's it, and a steering wheel. You have a rocker switch for the instrument dials, which switches the lights on. You have a wiper, which only has one speed. That's what you get. 
and you have your lights, which the single press will put them into side light and the next button down puts them onto dipped. All you have after that is an indicator and the thrill of the open road. They're such fun things to drive. It's basically like driving a go-kart. You've got to wheel at each corner. The steering is ultra responsive. It just goes where you point it. Simple rack and pinion steering. Because there's no power steering, because you're low to the ground, it literally feels so involving. And it is pinpoint steering. When you throw it around these little corners, around these A's and B roads, it's such a gratifying drive. It's about weaving way down these country lanes. You're using all the gears. You're shifting up and down. It's just a fun driving experience. And it's the first time I've driven a 1300, actually. Uh, I've got the uh, 1500 Spitfire engine in my midget, which is a little pokier. Um, it certainly has a little bit more pickup, but this engine just feels so much stronger. And all you can hear when the top's down is this wonderful exhaust note from behind you, rasping away. And if you want to hear more of an exhaust, I did a focused exhaust recording video, which you can watch if you click just above my head. Underneath here is a 1.3 or 1275, which is the same as you'll find in the minis. It's an Austin A series engine. It's pretty pokey, certainly up to 30 miles an hour, but don't expect to win any awards getting to 60, as this will take around 14 seconds to get there. Oh my God. Drop it down, give us some revs. And I'm only doing 40, but because the car is so low down and I've got the wind on my hair, I might as well be doing 90. This is the beauty of the experience of driving a midget. You get so much bang for your buck. You don't have to drive fast. It's not about driving fast. The whole point of these cars, with it being rear wheel drive, is that you can really push it around the corners and you're not even going that fast, but it just feels like you are. That's 40 miles an hour, two and a half thousand revs. And I just don't feel the need to go any faster. I'm having so much fun. The 1275 is paired with this four-speed manual gearbox, which is absolutely fine. It takes you a while to find reverse. You have to throw it all the way to the right and then down. One of the things you have to realize with this car is that it doesn't have a synchro mesh on first gear, which means when you're going down the gears and into first, you have to pretty much be stopped. Otherwise, you get a delightful crunch. That's the only thing I would say with midgets, actually. The gearbox is a limiting factor. You know, I really wish they came with overdrive as standard, as they do on the MGBs and on the Spitfires, interestingly. And it was a real oversight of MG. When they put the uh, Spitfire 1500 lump into the midget, they didn't put in the overdrive gearbox, which I just found completely astounding. Why would you make that decision? Now you might be thinking it's called a midget, there's not gonna be much room in this car. But do you know what? There is actually a surprising amount of room. It's a dedicated two-seater. So each passenger and the driver gets so much room that you can stretch your legs out, have the heater on, and even in the middle of winter, be as comfortable and as happy as Larry, whoever he was. Whilst this car does provide a lot of smiles, there are a few niggles that you either learn to love or absolutely cannot stand. For example, the phrases watertight and MG midget do not go together. Getting in and out of the car when the roof is up is gloriously undignified. When the heater is on, it's about the same temperature as the surface of the sun. But who cares about all of that? Now let's say you want to own one of these. You can pick these up anywhere from 500 pounds for something that really needs to be done from scratch and it's a complete state, all the way up to, you know, 12,000 pounds, maybe more for the early version, certainly. 
and it's all about condition. You've got to look for condition with the body. Down where the pillars are, where the sills are, even this has got some rust. So it's worth taking someone who knows what they're looking for when you're going to buy one of these. As long as you buy one with a good history, a good service history, somebody's looked after it, they're not complicated cars, you know, you can work on them yourself. And they're a brilliant car if you want to get into the mechanics, you know. Because a set of spanners, and a garage, you can do so much yourself. This one, I had £5,000 and I got it for a shade under that. And for that kind of money, you'd be looking for one that is in pretty good condition. A few cosmetic things, but overall in good nick. Tax on these cars, if they're over 40 years old, are classed as historic, which means they're tax-free. They're also technically MOT exempt as well. But it's probably safer to get it MOT still, unless you're a competent mechanic yourself. What's 40 quid amongst friends, eh? And bang for your buck, it's just a marvellous drive, it really is. Oh, you know, you just can't can't be roof down motoring when it's this simple. Now it's rivals is tricky. For this sort of money, for a classic car, it's almost your only choice. You could look for a Triumph Spitfire which features the 1500 engine that appeared in later models of this car, with one with the rubber bumper. Or you could spend a bit more money and go for an MGB or a Triumph TR4, TR6. I mean, you're starting to talk serious money when you're getting into that type of zone, especially for one in good condition. So really, I would urge you, if you have a bit of spare cash and you want a fun weekend car that's British and a bit sporty and that's easily maintainable, then look at the MG Midget. It's a very poignant moment for me because this whole drive has reminded me just how much I loved my little midget and how much I still love my little midget. Oh, the smell of the oil, the smell of the fuel. This is classic motoring at its heart. It's just, oh, simple, classic, affordable motoring. Sense that there's nothing between you and the road. There's no assist. It's. Just man, machine, and oh, I'm getting so nostalgic now. You'll have to forgive me, but. Now let's have some fun around the corners. Into third. The sun's out. The roads are inviting. There's no power steering. You're throwing it in. The little rasp out the back. Around the corner. Oh, third gear. Engine roaring. 4,000 RPM. Absolutely brilliant. You can't get better for your money. This is the most fun bang for buck. <laughs> Love it! So there you have it, this cheeky little British sports car. The verdict, Rich? I like it, but then I've always liked the MG Midget. I mean, obviously it doesn't have quite as much power as the 1500, but it feels a stronger lump altogether. Um, the 1500 is a really, really delicate engine. Yeah. You treat it with a little bit of respect, whereas this, I feel you can really put your foot down and really go for it. It really is. Basically, if you want a cheap, easy to maintain, fairly reliable British classic sports car, it's hard to overlook this as one of the options. Bang for buck, MG Midget all the way. So there you go. It has the two chaps seal of approval. Take care guys, we look forward to seeing you soon with more videos to come and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, masks, two meters, washy handy. You heard it here first. Bye! Ciao, ciao.